Hey, what's up everybody? It's Dakota from Waldemar Design and Machine again, and today I would like to talk about cone rolling. So it's a more specialty thing and it's a little bit tricky and we get a lot of questions about it, so I wanted to cover it in today's video. So let's get started. The first thing that you are going to need is a cone blank or your material you're going to be working with. And that is directly limits your cone. So you're going to have to cut out um, the shape that you want your cone to be. So figure out what your minor diameter, your major diameter is of your cone, and then also the width of your cone, and that can help you determine your cone blank. Um, once it is cut out, you're going to need something to roll it with. So you're going to need either a plate roll. You can do it on any style of plate roll, whether that's initial pinch, double initial pinch, um, or pyramid style. They all get um, varied results on your cone, but kind of the same principles apply. Or you can get a designated cone roll, which that's more for specialty applications and one-off cones that are high production. So today I would like to talk about rolling cones on a plate roll, specifically a four-roll plate roll, but again, the same principles apply to the different configurations. So once you have a plate roll, you have your cone blank. The other thing you're going to need is a cone attachment on your plate roll, and that is a little sleeve that fits over the end of the top roll on the drop-in side and has a snubber on it. It either has a solid steel snubber that's rounded or it will have, if you get the heavy-duty cone attachment, it's going to have a little roller there that spins. Um, but same principle applies and you have that. And I also recommend hardened and polished roll options. Otherwise you can damage or scar up your rolls on your plate roll. So once you have all that in place, it's time to start rolling cones and how do you do that? So the first thing is you're gonna insert your material on the drop-in side with the minor diameter right up against the cone snubber, like shown here, and you're going to pinch your material. Um, so you're going to raise the pinch roll up, depending on material thickness, um, until it is just so gripping the major diameter side or the outside of the workpiece. And that is um, very, very important and a part that is a lot of times um, overlooked or a mistake, common mistake that people make. And the reason you want to just so grip that is you think about the amount of material that's going to need to be rolled on the major side in comparison to the minor side. So the minor diameter side is going to be skidding a lot of the time. It's going to, the outside um, major diameter is going to be rolling and whenever um, it releases the resistance, the minor diameter side is going to move slightly until it hits resistance again, then it's going to skid until it frees up and, and rock itself around. So that's why you have the snubber. It's going to skid against the snubber. If it's if you pinch it the whole way, the whole complete width of the cone, you're going to get very um, much scarring and marring on the minor diameter, and it's not going to be a nice cone when you're done. So that's very important, and that's accomplished by the crown of the rolls. So the rolls are crowned for deflection when you're normally rolling cylinders, and so they're slightly larger in the middle and taper towards the ends. So that's how comes you can just pinch the outside. With that being said, you need to keep in mind that they're crowned from the center moving out. So you can only roll a cone half the working length of your machine. So if you have a four foot machine, two foot wide cones, your limit, six foot machine, three foot wide cones, your limit. However, there is a workaround for that. We do offer a pinch trim option, which um, basically allows you to move just one end of the pinch roll so that you can change the um, the parallel of that basically. So you could raise just the one end and accomplish um, the same thing if you want to roll a cone that's the full working length of your machine. So that is an option available. So once you got your, your piece inserted, got it gripped just on the major diameter side, it's time to start rolling. And this process is very similar to your normal rolling process. Um, you can do your pre-bend, you can um, basically run it through with multiple presets. Uh, that's a little bit tricky, it's hard to automate this. It is fairly manual to do a cone. Um, but the first thing is you're gonna need to get that taper, right? So your bending roll or rolls, in this case it's a four roll, um, are gonna need to be trimmed to where the one side 
raise this more than the other side so you get the taper of your cone. And you can do that on your control. There should be a roll trim option. You hold that in, raise the bending roll, and it's gonna basically lock out the drive-in side and only the drop-in side on a four roll is going to raise up. Once you get the taper you like, you can turn it back to normal and when you raise and lower it, it's gonna lock both sides together and hold that angle as they go up and down. And it'll remain held until you zero it out and lower the roll completely, then it'll just get rid of the, the trim that you have in the roll and you can move both sides normally again once you completely lower it. Another thing that a lot of people mess up is they try and roll a cone in a single pass, like shown here. So they just insert their workpiece, turn it up, and then roll it tight whole way around in one pass. And the reason that you can't roll a cone in one pass like you can a cylinder shape is because it puts stress on one side of the material and it skews it to where it's off center like this. Like in the workpiece shown here, you don't have two ends that meet up properly. They're, they're skewed. So we recommend rolling it in a minimum of two passes. And here's a demonstration of how to do that in two passes. Um, you basically on the first time through, you're gonna to wanna to roll it to about 65 to 75% closed somewhere in that range and then you're going to roll it backwards to close it up the rest of the way and basically it offsets that skew so it rolls it in one turn in one way the first time and skews your material in that direction because of the stress and then you do it backwards in the opposite direction and it's going to pull it back to about parallel um, hopefully once you get your cone size dialed in it, it does take um, a little bit of skill but the operator can soon start to get a feel for it and it's not too bad and you can start producing cones. So hopefully that helped you guys today understand a little bit of the process um, and maybe answered some questions you have or help solve a few problems that you're experiencing when you roll cones. So if you need any specific help at all on anything, feel free to give us a call. Um, we would love to do a consultation or we can come to your location for specific training on cone rolling or just plate rolling in general. So um, feel free to reach out and we'd love to help in any way we can. So thank you guys and have a great day.